Ms. Robertson. Yes, Your Honor. Your world was turned upside down at the age of eight when you received the shocking news that the man you believed to be your biological father was not. Yes, Your Honor. You were informed that the defendant, Mr. McBain Sr., is your father. Yes, Your uh, Honor. No. You've dragged him to court to prove that today. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. McBain, you say during your military career you were married to the plaintiff's mother. However, you're certain that you are not her father because you claim her mother was unfaithful and you have proof. Yes, Your Honor, I do. Ms. Robinson, now, what happened when you turned eight years old? Please tell the court. When I was eight years old, my mother had sat me down and she had found Mr. McBain in the phone book and she said, this is your biological father right here. She pointed him out in the phone book? Yes, Your Honor. And from that point, I didn't really think anything of it. I was eight years old. It was kind of like it was nothing. So now my question is, is why... If he's denying it, why is his name on my birth certificate? Why did he sign his rights away? And, Your Honor, I have proof right here. Ryan, can you please hand me that evidence? Yes, Your Honor. And this, I can see, is still affecting you, even as an adult woman. This yes, memory Your Honor. of being told this at eight years old and having so many unanswered questions. Yes, Your Honor. So this is your birth certificate. Yes, my name it may be on there, Your Honor. However, it's on there because the state put it on there. I had nothing to do with, uh, with uh, putting my name on her birth certificate. So you're listed as father. Yes, but that was against my uh, objections. But during that time, you were married to her mother? Yes, ma'am, I was. So a child born within a marriage is presumed to be yeah, you, the husband's child. Yeah. So your name was automatically placed on the birth certificate as father. But even in that moment at the hospital... I wasn't there. You weren't there. But you you would not have voluntarily placed your name on the birth certificate if you had a choice. No, Your Honor. Because I you had doubts even then? Even then I had doubts. That's one of the reasons why I let uh, Mr. Ayers go ahead and, and adopt her, because she did deserve, uh, deserve to have a father. She's not... It's not her fault who her mother is. So you were married to her mother? Yes, Your Honor. And you served in the military? Yes, I was... Thank in you the... for your service. Thank you. But during that time, you say she was unfaithful. Yes, Your Honor, she was. Not only she was unfaithful, she asked me uh, for a threesome at one point in, in, in the marriage as well. So, Ms. Robertson, I want to move to you a little bit because after eight years old, how were you coping? I let it go until I turned right before my 13th birthday. And that's when I had told my mother that all I wanted for my 13th birthday was to meet Mr. McBain. What did she say? She got it for me. She I did. don't remember that at all. Um, I... Well, wait a minute. If you don't remember it, let me have her tell it. Ms. Robertson, <laughs> what do you remember? It only lasted about 40 minutes, and that was, like, more than anything in the world for me at that time. And then it was over. After that, I believe I had talked to him a couple times after that. Then all of a sudden, his phone number got disconnected. It was taken out of the phone book, and... He was just gone, like he fell off the face of the earth. I'm not her dad. Your mother is absolutely shaking over here. I want to stand her up. Ma'am, please. Ms. Graham, thank you for being here. Do you have any doubts that Mr. McBain is your daughter's biological father? Your Honor, well, well, we, Mr. Mr. McBain, married. you and I were married. We were living in the same place. Yes, and I worked a lot. And you were there. I was in the United States Coast Guard, Your Honor. Your Honor. And the first unit th that I was in... We were one and four duty, which meant I was on for, uh, I was off for one day and on for four. And you're suggesting that you worked too much to be her father. No, I'm, I'm saying I'm not her father because while, while in the Coast Guard, just before she informed me that uh, she was pregnant, I was told by the Coast Guard I was sterile. And, and you've got three kids after that, Mr. McBain. How yes, are I you sterile? I have three kids after that. However... It was due to stress. I was under a great... Oh, yeah, illness. you were under stress with other women. I never once cheated on Miss Graham. I'm not like her. You believe she was cheating on you around the time Ms. Robertson was conceived? Yes. Explain. As one example, I, went, I was working seven days a week for about three months straight and went back home. As I'm walking across the living room, I look over and there's a pair of boots and a coat on... Uh, uh, on the floor and the coat on the... Your Honor, those the, uh, were his, bo his boots and his coat. 
They were size 10, Your Honor. I wear size 12. The coat was a medium. I wear a, a, a 2X coat. Anyway, I walked over to her room. I beat on the door. I said, I don't know who you are in there, but you've got 30 seconds to get out of my house or you're going to be really sorry. No. Anyway, so you completely refute I met this suggestion that you were in your room with another man. Not only was she in a room with the other man, but she was having sex. I don't... So you feel Your like Honor, you Mr. caught Ray's her... just been a sperm donor to me. That's all he was. Our whole marriage was a joke. You were a cheat, that's why. She cheated on me from almost from day one. So it's obvious you all had some marital issues. <laughs> During the time Ms. Robertson was conceived, do you remember anything? Yes, that's about the time that we had the threesome. Your Honor, there was no threesomes in Kodiak. And if there was any threesomes at all, it was because Mr. McBain had asked for them. And why would I do that? I did that to to try and appease you and keep your legs closed. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Now, Ms. Graham, I did hear you admit that you were cheating, but you said you were cheating after Ms. Robertson was already conceived and born. Now, earlier you said... Yes, yes, you meant... You never slept with anybody. No. Before Ms. Robertson was conceived, no, I had not slept with anybody but Mr. McBain. That is an outright lie, After I found out I was pregnant with Ms. Robertson, then we had split up. I believe that the guy that we had the threesome with is is actually the uh, father of, of Ms. Robertson. Oh! Excuse me. And who is that? It was an individual I was stationed with. Yeah, you were stationed with a lot. I know, and but so were you. But wait a minute. He's talking about... Ooh. So, Mr. McBain, you truly believe this other man could potentially be Ms. Robertson's father? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Why? Well, between the Coast Guard telling me I was sterile and the fact that the man is Hawaiian, he's Samoan. I am... Your Honor, this girl is white as white could be. So wait a minute, you're saying the other guy is Samoan? (laughs) Yes. And so that's how you're... You believe that Ms. Robertson looks Samoan? Some of her facial features, yes. (laughs) No. (laughs) Your Honor, this is a confusion I put up with during the whole marriage with this man. The confusion she put up with (laughs) is she couldn't figure out who was in her bed. Woo! So, Ms. Graham, I have to ask you respectfully, do you remember this threesome? Not that he's talking about, no. Do you remember any threesome? There was one or two, yes, at his request. <laughs> okay. You're the one that brought your I friends do... to me. And why would I do that? <laughs> because you couldn't fulfill it. Okay. So... Is that right? You're moving on. I met at yeah. least ten gentlemen... Who, who claimed that they had been in her bed. Ten? Yes, ten. Really? Yes, Your Honor. How do you know this? They were talking I went about around, it? Yes, I got them to admit... To, I, I first, the first thing I did was I found out who they were. I got them to admit to what they had done because, you know, guys like to talk. So you befriended them, then once they said it, you said, aha. Exactly. Your Honor, we were well separated after this time. So you remember a time when you were having... Not ten men, no. Okay, but you <laughs> remember when you were, uh, let's say it nicely... Promiscuous uh, with one other man, uh, yes. Well, that wasn't really the word I was going to use, but since you said it. <laughs> yes, you were promiscuous. promiscuous one other man at a time. Ms. Robertson, I can only imagine (laughs) how difficult this testimony is for you to hear. And as I look at you with tears in your eyes, and you have to listen to this going back and forth between your mother and the man she says is your biological father, it's just not right. Anything you've heard thus far, does it make you think any differently? Do you... No, because I look like him. I'm built like him. Um... But the part I'm having trouble with, Mr. McBain, is... Even if your account is true, even if she was sleeping around, if she was your wife and you were also sleeping with her, couldn't you potentially be Ms. Robertson's biological father? I don't feel that she looks like me, as much like me as she thinks she does. Also, due to the fact of what the Coast Guard told me and due to the fact that, that Ms. Graham was, was, is a cheater. What do you think 
Ms. Graham's motivation was to sit Ms. Robertson down at eight years old and say, I, I need to tell you something. I have no idea whatsoever what, what she was trying to pull there. Because yeah. nobody would walk their daughter, their child into this brick wall. <laughs> nobody would do that. Thank you. So I have, I, have, I, I have three other kids that I've made and then one other that I took on. And my fiance has two children that I, I, I'm father. Uh, <laughs> no wonder father he's too. denying her. This is your mini. This is your fiance. Yes, ma'am. Please stand, ma'am. I'd like to hear from you. Say your name for the court. My name is Sarah Lawrence. Sarah Lawrence. Okay, you are Mr. McBain's fiance. Yes, I am. Uh, had he ever told you that he had another child by his wife, uh, potentially, even if he didn't believe it, potentially? Um, well, actually, I found out about Miss Robinson. Um, she had contacted him through Facebook and also called, and um, I had no idea who she was, and I kind of freaked out on him a little bit. But then he <laughs> briefed me on um, what her um, motive was, and that was to find out if that was her father. If you were not her father, why did you show up at my house and tell her, I am your daddy? When and did you turn do that? around and sign you your rights away the next day for her. See, he wouldn't do that. You don't I know him. I was yes, at you did not house. know him. I was at your house, You did yes. not know him. And the reason I was at your house is because the state of Oregon was taking money out of my unemployment for child support. Because so she's your I daughter. Went to your house, and I sit in your living room two different times, and that's all it took, and your then-husband decided he was going to adopt and asked me if I'd sign, uh, sign over my rights. And I said, yes, because it's only fair to her that she's got a father. He was willing to do it, and I didn't feel that she was my daughter. So, Ms. Lawrence, you hear this story about your fiancé giving up his parental rights, 18 months old, this baby's 18 months old. Well, he tells me the story of uh, how he's telling you now. Your he's honest. an honest man. He takes care of his responsibility. He doesn't... He's just not the way that she's painting the picture for everybody. Your Honor, for the last I'm years. an honest woman, too. Ms. Robertson, all of this aside... It's confusing. What, it is. Yeah. It is. And what I see happening before my very eyes is what I know happened then. <laughs> that they both do all of this and then you just fade to the back. Your Honor, no, no matter what... Your mother's running her child. mouth now. I'm trying to talk to you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I have a father, Mr. Ayers, that has taken care of me. I'm very blessed for that. And, um... Which is what my, my goal was to have him, in having him adopt her. And then I have Every my mother... Every child deserves to have a father. But the truth is, you relinquished your parental rights, and it wasn't until three years later... It wasn't that long, Your Honor. She was a baby at the time. And I'm scratching my head at, at how the, the court you would let... Pushed your right. uh, because he didn't think yes. that she was his. That happened. And because you guys were separated. You guys were you divorcing. You didn't know. No, I don't. I wasn't there. But exactly. I, I believe so what you, he tells me. You're not even in this picture. <laughs> so, Ms. Robertson... She is in my picture. Back to you, since yes, I honor. seem to be the only person that addresses you. How in the world have you been getting on and managing all of this. And what do you hope to get hope from this answer? I hope that he is. Um, I want to know more about my background. Um, like he said, he has three other kids. I would like to become in contact with them as well. And... Uh, and if it turns out that she is... Let her speak. I just... Mainly my heritage and uh, to get to know him, his... You know, I, I possibly have siblings out there. So even after all you've heard him say... I can see in your eyes, it still means the world to you that if he's your biological father, for you to have a chance to know him. Yes, Your Honor. If she is my, my child, then I'm going to have to do some uh, reevaluating of my thinking. You sure if, are. If she is my <laughs> child, if she's my child... 33 what, what years I'm, late. Will you just let me speak for a moment? If she is my child, by all means, I will step up. And, I, and, and help her in any way. If she's not my child, I'll still help her find her, who, who her father is. Thank you. And I have those answers for you, you all. Ron, these results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Robertson v. McBain Sr., when it comes to 33-year-old Maylene Robertson, it has been determined by this court. 
Mr. McBain Sr., you are not her father. Ms. Robertson, how do you feel? Are you all right? Yeah. So, Ms. Graham, you've been very sure. You don't have to live with the fact that you've lied to your daughter. Your Honor, I have to live with the fact that I lied to myself. No, oh. no, 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 no. You're not gonna go all psychological and get me off my point. Because this is the problem. I'm talking about your daughter, you're talking about yourself. <laughs> That's been the problem. I have been saying it over and over again. And no one listens. Everyone's still yelling, me, me, no me, me, no she, she, no he. And Miss Robertson has just faded into the background when she really is the person that has endured the most pain. You did your dirt. He did his dirt. <laughs> but the pile of crap landed on her. That's not right. No, Your Honor, it's not. It's not right. No, it's not. Ms. Livingston, you've petitioned this court for a DNA test on your 21-month-old daughter, Jordan, to prove to your now ex-husband, Mr. Livingston, that he is not Jordan's biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Livingston, you claim that the only reason your ex-wife is denying you are the father is because she desperately wants to have a relationship with her ex-boyfriend, Mr. Dorschlag, the man your ex-wife claims to be. Jordan's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Now, you're here today to prove that you are indeed Jordan's father. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Dorschlag is waiting in the hallway and we will hear from him shortly. So, Ms. Livingston, why are you so adamant that Mr. Livingston is not your daughter's biological father? Around the time of concession, I had sex with another man. You did? Yes, Your Honor. But did you also have sex with Mr. Livingston? Yes, Your Honor. So why is it you believe that the other man is your child's father and not Mr. Livingston? My daughter, when she was born, she looked a lot like Mr. Livingston. She had dark hair and, you know, she had some of his facial features, but as she got older, she got blonde hair. Neither Mr. Livingston nor I have blonde hair, but Mr. Dorschlag does. She started to look a lot like Mr. Dorschlag. And so, Mr. Livingston, you say today that this is your biological child. Yes, Your Honor. Why are you so sure? Because I was there through all of it. I was there through the doctor's appointments. I was there through the, the birth. Everything about that kid looks like me. So take me back. When you found out you were pregnant, who did you tell, Ms. Livingston? Um, I told Mr. Livingston because we were seeing each other. We had just gotten engaged right before I found out I was pregnant. Like two weeks before I found out I was pregnant, we had gotten engaged. He proposed me with my class graduation ring. And then I had a dream that I was pregnant. And I told my mom, I'm like, I think I'm pregnant. She's like, Jay, you're probably not pregnant. Stress can cause, you know, symptoms. And so ultimately you did find out you were pregnant. The next day I found out I was expecting. I went to the health department that morning. I was like, I want to go to the health department. I want to find out for sure. And we found out we were four and a half weeks pregnant. I looked at the pregnancy test when she told me it was positive and I was like, I knew it. <laughs> and so was it a happy moment? It was. I was excited. I've always wanted to be a mother and I was excited to be a mom. And then in that moment, did you also think about the other potential father? No, because at the time, I wasn't thinking that there was a possibility that he could be the father because it was one time. And so, Mr. Livingston, you, are you on the baby's birth certificate? Yes, Your Honor. You are? I have been told I was the baby's father from the th very first day that we found out she was pregnant. And you were with her throughout the pregnancy? Yes, Your Honor. You went to the doctor's appointment? Yes, Your Honor. And you were there when the baby was born? Yes, Your Honor. I was out in the lobby room because I can't deal with blood. So I... <laughs> So I, I, had let a her I let her mother go in the delivery room while she was doing the C-section. But you were there waiting. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And at this point, you didn't really have any doubt in your mind, is that correct? No, Your Honor. So when did the doubt begin to set in and when were you informed she... about He knew before that there's a possibility because I was messaging Mr. Dorschlag on Facebook and he told me that he thought that he was the father, but even if he wasn't, that I should leave Mr. Livingston and be with him. Let him be my baby daddy. And Mr. Livingston saw those messages on Facebook. 
Yes. And that was while I was Only six after months I pregnant. had to go through her phone, through her Facebook app, to find out that she was planning on leaving me for him. So you had no idea? No, Your Honor. You thinking you're in a marriage that's going well and you have a new baby? Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. We hadn't had the baby yet, Your Honor. And no, I did not say I was going to leave Mr. Dorslack. I said, I'm married, Jason. I married him. He is my child's father. That is what was said in the messages. I never once at that time told him that I was going to move to Tennessee with him. There were several times throughout this whole time that she was planning on creating a relationship with him. They were talking about wanting to form a relationship. So are you saying, Mr. Livingston, that at first, when you guys were engaged, she was okay with you, you being the biological father, but then she decided she wanted to be with Mr. Dorschlag, and then all of a sudden... Yes, Your Honor. ...she decided you were not the biological yes, father. Yes, Your Honor. So you don't think this is about the DNA, but this is about who she wants to be with? Yes, Your Honor. When, after I got the divorce papers, she started telling me that there could be a possible opportunity that Jordan is not mine. When you got the divorce papers... Yes, Your Honor, I have the copy of the divorce papers right here. Let me see that. So, wait a minute. You all are married, the baby's born, and then you get a divorce right after? No. No, Your Honor, that is not how it went. Me and my sister, who's sitting right here, we were sitting on my couch, we were watching a movie at my mom and dad's house, and I hear a knock on the door. Well, it's a, it's a cop. He's coming to bring me the divorce papers, and then when he leaves, shortly after that, I get a phone call from my ex-wife over here, who tells me that there is a possibility that Jordan is not mine. So you called him and said that, Miss Livingston? Your Honor, I told him, yes, there was a possibility that Jordan was not his. Also, Your Honor, the reason I filed for the divorce is not so that I could be with Mr. Dorslag. It's because I got a screenshot of a text message from my family member saying that he had asked for nude photos. From, from my a fam family member? Yeah, from my family member. Oh. One that I am really close to. I had previously is that true, asked... Mr. Livingston? Yes, Your Honor, it is. I didn't start messaging Mr. Dorslag about us getting back together or anything until after I filed for divorce. That is not true. These messages have happened while she was pregnant with Jordan before she gave birth to Jordan. So you're saying that they were already in contact? Yes, Your sending Honor. Sending pictures and texts back and forth? Yes, Your Honor. Since the time we broke up till now, we have never been out of contact. We have been talking to each other this entire yeah, time. Yes, we still have feelings for each other, and we have had feelings for each other since day one. That's not gonna change, and I told Mr. Livingston that in the beginning. I said, there is one person in my life that will always be in my heart, and that is Jason Dorschlag. And there is there nothing you, go, you can do Honor. to change it. She just proved her point. And so you think this is all about her trying to get back with Mr. Dorschlag. Yes, Your Honor. You don't have any doubt that this child is your biological no, your, child. No, Your Honor. Sir, you've and brought a got... witness. I'd like to hear from her. Please stand, ma'am. And state your name. Alicia Arbogast. Miss Arbogast, you are Mr. Livingston's... Little sister. Little sister. And so you are here to testify as to what exactly? For Michael to be Jordan's father. You believe he is, in fact, Jordan's yes, your biological Honor. father. Please explain to the court why. Because if you look at that little girl's eyes and you look at my brother's eyes, they have the exact same shape. They have the same face. Michael has been there since she was a baby. Michael's been there through the pregnancy. And so you've always believed this was your niece? Yes. Forever. We drove four hours from Fort Scott, Kansas, all the way to Great Bend, Kansas, for the birth of Jordan Livingston. We were all there for support of the birth of Jordan. And I honestly did think Jordan was Michael's at the time, but as she's gotten older and her hair is light and she does have some features of Jason. Your Honor, every child is born with every DNA color in their body. Their hair can be any color it wants, no matter the parents. She looks just like Michael. Why do you think that Ms. Livingston is saying unequivocally, Mr. Livingston is not my child's father? I think because she adamantly wants a relationship with Mr. Dorschlag and she wants nothing to do with my brother and she doesn't want him to be around. Jerome, I think it's time we hear from Mr. Dorschlag. Okay. Will you escort him in, please? Sure. Hello, sir. Thank you for joining us today. 
Hi. You understand that we are here discussing the paternity as it relates to uh, baby Jordan. Yes, Do you believe you are this child's biological father? Your Honor, in a way, I do believe it because of the eye color and the hair color of the kid. I have sat down and looked at my previous baby pictures and baby pictures of Jordan, and I have came to the conclusion that because of the hair color and the eye color, we do look similar. That's exactly how I feel. I want Mr. Dorslag to be the father. I do, but... But wanting and then but coming I to am maternity not exactly. court to prove that he's the biological father. That's two different things. I came to paternity court to find out who my daughter's biological father is because she has a right to know just like everybody else has a right to know. I don't want Michael raising my daughter if she is not his. If she is Jason's, he has a right to be her father. That is why I am here. So what you're saying ultimately is, is you just hope he's the father. Yes, that is you exactly don't how I feel. You don't believe beyond a doubt that he is. Excuse no, me, Honor. there is doubt. Okay. If that's the case, where has he been this whole entire time that she was pregnant and through well, the they, birth? She said they've never lost contact. Mr. Dorschlag, have you been then in why has Baby he not Jordan's been there, life? Though? I have not, Your Honor. I mean, I have talked to Judith about the whole situation. I, I've seen pictures of her. I've not actually seen her physically in person. You have not? No, no. he was living in Tennessee. He left soon after the conception time. He went back to Tennessee with his family. He found out I was pregnant when I was further along. He, like, when I posted on Facebook, he found out. We didn't talk about him being the father until I was, it was summer, and he was like, well, is there a chance I'm the baby's dad? You know, you could always move out here and be with me and let me be your baby daddy. So, Ms. Livingston, are you saying that he's not the biological father because you truly think... I don't know. Mr. Dorschlag is. I think that Mr. Dorschlag is my daughter's father because of how she looks now. She looks like him. Pictures of him as a baby, she looks just like him. And you submitted those photos to the court. So on the left, this is a picture of Jordan. Yes. And on the right, it's a picture of Mr. Dorschlag as a child. Yes. And Your you Honor, say there's a similarity. If yes. you go to the, the picture right before well, that one... Well, the picture's not a very good one, but if you look at her now and him now, you still see the resemblance. I don't believe it, Your Honor. That girl looks exactly like me when I was younger. That one right there, she looks exactly identical to my and picture. And you believe when you see that picture, she looks like you? Yes, Your Honor. She has the exact hair that I had when I was born. Who has been there? She's 21 months old. She's almost two years old. Who's been there? I have. And I have been there too, Your Honor. So has he contributed, Ms. Livingston? Not since she was seven months old. He came home in June is when he finally came home. Michael was there and I was putting together a crib. He was making me upset. I was having to do it all, my, all by myself because he was in the living room playing video games with his friend. I was putting the crib together. So, yes, I went to Jason for comfort because Mr. Dorschlag has been my no, friend Honor, ever since we not, broke up. That's not true. I put the crib together and then me and my friend went and we played video games. But before that, I was also working and paying for stuff that Jordan needed. And while I was doing that, I gave her money to go pay the gas bill and she used it on buying the Fifty Shades of Grey novels. <laughs> that never. Instead of buying that never the gas bill. That never happened, Your Honor. He didn't did get a job. Did you pay the gas bill with the money, Miss? Yes, Livingston? I did. The gas bill no, was your paid. No, was... didn't. And because that's she came even... home and said that I just got the new Fifty Shades of Grey books. Yep. No, they weren't new. What does that have to do with paternity? It doesn't. <laughs> he didn't get a job at McDonald's until September. This was in summer. He didn't get a job until September, and he only had that job until two weeks after our daughter was born. Then he lost it. And, Mr. Dorschlag, if you are Jordan's biological father, are you going to step up? You say you haven't even met her, and she's almost two years old. Yes, Your Honor, I'm going to step up for the simple fact that growing up, my dad and mom had split up, and I wouldn't want that for my children. I plan on being there for my kid. Like, I've even sat down with my current girlfriend now and talked about the situation of if Jordan comes out to be mine, about moving to Colorado to be closer with her. That way there's not such a distance for Excuse me, me to You said current girlfriend? Yes, girlfriend. Girlfriend. If... And that means you're still talking to Mrs. Livingston, right? All right. Well, I think the only way to move forward is to just get the results. Jerome, I'm ready for you. Envelope, please. 
you go. Thank you. You're welcome. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Livingston versus Livingston Dorschlag, pertaining to 21-month-old Jordan Livingston, and whether Mr. Livingston or Mr. Dorschlag is the biological father, it has been determined by this court. Her biological father is Mr. Livingston. Yes. I guess yes. that I didn't know for sure. I just wanted to know for sure. And I told Mr. Doris, like, I didn't know for sure. I said that sometimes I see similarities, but more I see similarities to him, and that's why I'm confused. I don't know where she got her blonde hair from. I told everybody that daughter will always be mine, even if she wasn't proven to be mine. And like I would I still said, step up and take care of her. Any kid can have any color of hair. Any color of hair, it's in your DNA. Are you two divorced or still married? We are divorced. divorced. You are. As of May 26th of 2015. Okay. You were finalized. Uh, okay, well listen. So now you understand you have two children together. Yes, Your Honor. You have to co-parent. Mm-hmm. And you want to be as involved as you possibly can. Yes, Your Mr. Honor. Livingston. Ultimately, you all are going to have to communicate. You are going to have to work together. So communication, cooperation, and commitment. Meaning sometimes it will not be easy, but you have to say to yourselves, to make sure these children have the life they want in the relationship with both parents that I think you both want them to have. Ms. Reynolds, you claim you have known since the day your daughter was born Mr. Fleeton is her biological father. You are here with your daughter, hoping when today's results reveal the truth, it will help build that father-daughter bond she has always dreamed of. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Fleeton, you say you have no recollection of ever having an intimate relationship with Ms. Reynolds, and therefore it is impossible for you to be her daughter's biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Reynolds, what was the nature of your relationship with the defendant? We didn't have a relationship. I met him at a, a sex toy party, and he was the... He was the stripper. He was the and entertainment. Yes. Teddy bear. Yes. And, you know, we didn't have any uh, action at that time. But maybe a week later, we were at a popular club in our city, and, um... He was there and he was dancing, not entertaining, just dancing. And um, I was there and I actually did my mating call. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> How did that make you feel, Jerome? He's running over there. That. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Still when you were killed. at the club, you <laughs> hit that note. I did. Maybe a couple of nights later, or maybe a week or so, he gave me a call after hours, booty calling hours. And um, he said he was going to come through, and he did. He slid through. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe about five times, I can remember three exactly, that he came over to my home, booty calling hours. I didn't know. Nothing about this man as far as what was his favorite color. We never dated. We, you know, we didn't go out or anything like that. It was always booty call. So, Mr. Fleeton, do you remember sleeping with Ms. Reynolds? No, ma'am. I have no recollection of ever having a sexual encounter with Ms. Mary. But I'm unforgettable. Uh. Well, do you remember her mating call? Hit that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember hearing that one night? <laughs> No, Bell. <laughs> so you don't remember being intimate with Ms. Reynolds at all? No, ma'am. I was dating one of her daughter's friends, and she recognized me. And I'm sorry. No disrespect, baby. No disrespect. But like I say, today I'm here to find out if I'm Keasia's biological father. <laughs> So the court was able to obtain photos of each of you from back in the day. Take a look at the picture, Mr. Fleeton, of 
Ms. Reynolds. Do you remember a woman look like that? No, ma'am. Have you ever had sex with somebody and then didn't remember it? I remember all my sexual encounters. Mm. So, can you take me to the moment when you found out you were pregnant, Ms. Reynolds? Well, when I became pregnant, I was with my ex at that time because we were on and off. And at the time that I had an encounter with Mose, <laughs> me and my ex was off. And um, we had gotten back together. So, um, the whole time, I just knew that I was pregnant for my ex until the baby was born. She came out snow white without the doors, okay? <laughs> With these green, brownish color eyes, sandy brown hair, and I said, oh, my God. <laughs> For the first nine months of her life, I didn't even take pictures. I didn't want no one to see her. I kept her covered up. If I went out in public, they, let me see your baby. Nope, she covered up. Nope, she's asleep. I wouldn't let no one see her. Because you were... I had already convinced my ex that this was his child. And I, we moved on. He was okay with it and I was okay with it. But I knew. Well, you know that skin color varies. Yes. And people want to base so much on the color of the skin of the baby. Mm -hmm. When you know genetics can bring us a rainbow of yes. shades. And that's how I was able to convince my ex because he has some, you know, lighter complected or mixed family members and so do I. So that's why it was so convincing. Ah, at, at so you time. use the, the very argument and the very fact that gave you doubt you used them to convince your ex. I did. But, Mr. Fleeton, you had no idea about the pregnancy or Kiesha being born. No, Your Honor. You all had just fallen out... I'm, well, you don't even remember, so I don't know why I'm asking you. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ms. Reynolds, at some point, you all had just parted ways or just... It was, it was a casual booty call thing and, and then you just it. stopped calling. Yes. He went to call so, when's the next duty. time you connect with Mr. Fleeton? Um, the next time I connected with him would have been when Kiesha was 12 years old. She was at um, my daughter's friend's house babysitting. And I didn't know that the daughter's friend was dating Mose at that time. She had taken a picture of Kiesha and Mose together the young lady. <laughs> so my daughter brought it to me and I laughed it off and I was, you know, just laughed it off and I didn't say anything. But after a while, it clicked to me. Oh, my God. Because if it's that noticeable, he have kids out here. What if she end up dating someone that could possibly be her brother? I need to contact him. And I told him, it's something that we need to talk, not on Facebook, not on the phone, but in person. And he actually finally came to my house and we talked about it. And I told him that Kiesha could possibly be his child. And he said he didn't remember sleeping with me. And at that moment, I said, oh, well, you know, so taking it to my grave at that point. So you basically were telling him to protect your daughter. Exactly. And once he said, I don't even remember you, you just said, you know what? I'm taking it to my grave. My ex has bought into the fact that he's her biological father. Yes. Just leave well enough alone. Yes. This is done. Yes. So, Kiesha, I want to ask you, because this is very difficult to hear. This is not easy. Can you tell the court, who were you told all your life your father was? Who were you told? The guy on my birth certificate, my mom's ex, but he was never in my life, and he always lied to me and said he was busy. I mean, I always wanted a father in my life from watching my sisters grow up with their father, you know, going just to spelling bees and walking up to the bus stop, make sure they get on the bus, you know, picking them up from the bus stop, that type of stuff. Your Honor, may I speak? If by chance Kiesha is my biological daughter, if I would've knew back then, she would've had a totally different lifestyle. Totally different. And, Mr. Fleeton, I can tell how 
emotional this makes you. I see the tears in your eye. What, what's, what's moving you so much? Her. Can you put it into words? Since I met Keasia, for well, the last six months, I've been there. She called. I'm not busy, I'm there. Her birthday party, I was there. I've been there since, you know, the last six months since I found out. Can you tell me, how did you reconnect? How did you go from saying, I don't even remember a relationship with her mother to reconnecting and establishing such a bond? What did I miss? I was walking out of a clothing store. She was going in to the clothing store. And I just seen myself in her. Mm. Mm. And I stepped to her. And I said, <laughs> I look like, you look like you could be my baby. And I guess she went back home to her mom and, and told her she met. When he said that I can see you were emotional too, Kiasia, what did that feel like? I felt confused a little bit because, you know, I never had nobody as a father in my life. And I got kids of my own. I want them to grow up with the grandfather and basically going down the right road and not the wrong road. So, Mr. Fleeton, why didn't you take the opportunity at 12? Because I didn't remember Miss Mary. I didn't remember an encounter of having sex with Miss Mary, so how could I possibly have a but daughter? But it's like you still don't remember it. I and don't. yet, you've gone up to Keisha and said, you look like my baby, and now you've got this whole relationship with her. I, I don't know. I'm missing something. I'm not that man I used to be back then. You know? Um, I've been through a lot been through that time. I was an ordained minister, you know? So how can I get out here and preach to, to somebody if I don't have my house in order? Mm -hmm. So if it's a possibility that I slept with Miss Mary and I created a daughter, I need to know. I'm a disabled veteran. She could go to college for free, you know. Thank you for your service. Right. You are... And with all of that, you know you wouldn't be able to get back the last 20 years. No, ma'am. But your point is, I want to make the next 20 better than the last. Yes, ma'am. And why does that bring tears to your eyes? Because my baby right now wouldn't be having three kids. Single mom. She would be in the college of military right now if I was there. And I wanted to know that. I'm sorry, but I'm here now. Is there anything you'd like to say, Kiesha? Would you like to say something to Mr. Fleeton? Uh, I appreciate you a lot for being there for me and my kids showing me to the family, and I just hope that you are my father because I want my kids to have a grandfather, you know. I'm already I, papa. I want to... I just... I want to have him in my life. And I feel like that would be a good thing because she has so many male abandonment issues and she made so many bad choices in men, you know, during her lifetime. And that weighs on you, Mom, because you it feel does. like you had a part to play in that. It does. I see your tears. Everybody make mistakes. The thing is, if you don't learn from it, it's not a mistake. And I, I made this choice to take it to my grave when actually, you know, it was just so many lives that are affected behind this skeleton. Hmm. There's so many lives, not just hers, mine, his, the other, the ex, their family, you know, my family. A lot of lives are affected behind this. You have explained the phenomenon that is paternity, doubt, secrets, question, and you've explained why we do this every day. <laughs> so many lives. I want you all to be able to get to the phase of healing. And I don't think we can do that until we get the truth. 
Jerome, may I have the envelope, please? Yes. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Reynolds versus Fleeton, when it comes to 20-year-old Kiesia Reynolds, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Fleeton, you are not the father. I'm very sorry, Kiesia. You okay? Here, yeah, baby. You know, of course. Be anyway, baby. Mm -hmm. I'll always be here. I was here and I didn't know. So what? All right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You no okay, problem, honey? Girl. Yes, ma'am. I want to say this to you because you've been so strong and I appreciate your strength. I admire you for it. But I do want to let you know that it is okay to express what you really feel. Because at the end of the day, this is about you and this is for you. You're gonna be okay. And we're here for you. And this is just the first step. We have many more to take. I need to ask your mother, do you know who her biological father is? It would be my ex. Do you know where he is? Yes. I am going to ask you to have the courage to have that very uncomfortable conversation with him. You never got the facts. And we are here for you to do the testing should you need it. Okay. As my mom used to say, well, ain't nothing to it but to do it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs>